Over the past few months, I've had requests to do a teaching on the three different harvests because there are many who um, are seeing the truth that there is no pre-tribulation rapture and they want to be able to share with their friends and family the truth about what real end times prophecy is. Um, so I decided to wait on Father for him to let me know when the right time was to release that teaching and he's given me that go ahead. So um, we'll be digging into the prophecy and teaching about the barley, the wheat, and the grapes um, harvest. So to begin with, um, when Israel came out of Egypt, Father told them that they were to commemorate their main experiences in certain ceremonies conducted upon specific holidays or festivals, his holy feast days. The three main celebrations were Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. <clears throat> These are also known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Harvest, or Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of the Ingathering. Gathering. Um, God's basic instructions can be found in Exodus, and for the brevity of time for scripture purposes, I'm going to just hit the highlights in scripture or just pause so that you can pause and read the scripture yourself. Like, it, like I said, I'm just giving you the breadcrumbs so you can f go do more study for yourself. So obviously here again, highlighted Festival of Unleavened Bread, Festival of Harvest, um, and Festival of the Ingathering. Gathering. And three times a year, your meals are to appear before the Lord God. So these are also solemn assemblies. The Passover um, and the seven, breads, seven days of unleavened bread is first. It commemorates when Israel left Egypt under Moses um, on their way to the Promised Land. The Promised Land is also symbolic of heaven of when we will receive our eternal life and salvation after judgment. Um, the second feast is Pentecost, or the harvest. It commemorates giving the law at Mount Sinai when Moses received the Ten Commandments. Tabernacles, or in gathering, commemorates the two things, building of the tabernacle in the wilderness and the time Israel was supposed to cross the Jordan into the Promised Land. <clears throat> Passover is associated with the harvest of barley. Pentecost is associated with the harvest of wheat. And tabernacles is associated with the grape harvest. Now, barley is usually the first crop that, um, that comes to ripen in the spring of the year. And then during that time, each family would bring a handful of ripe barley to give to God as the first fruits of the harvest. Um, and the priest also took some of the barley and waved it up and down as a wave offering. <clears throat> and only barley could have been used because at that time the wheat had not ripened yet. Wheat usually ripens um, around Passover. And then there is an Old Testament story that shows this as well. And again, for brevity, I'm going to kind of skip through and you can pause to read through if you'd like to. Um, but it's described in Exodus 9, 31 and 32, where it shows that um, they had to wait for the crops to heart ripen. So we see that the wheat ripened later around time of Pentecost. And just as barley was offered to Yah on the first day of the week after Passover, so was the wheat offered on Pentecost seven weeks later. <clears throat> so you can see that there also in Exodus 34, 22. And the grapes ripened at the end of the growing season in late summer. Um, when the grapes were harvest harvested, they were thrown into the wine presses to be trodden down, and the juice was collected. And at the each, um, each of the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles, a pitcher of grape juice from this harvest was poured out before the Lord as a drink offering in the temple. So we see that there are me three main feast days. You've got Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Each of these called for temple ceremonies and a solemn assembly, okay? Um, the first two harvests were grains and the last is a fruit. And these are harvest festivals at three times in the year when all the males were to stand in the presence of God. <coughs> Again, solemn assembly. Um, these festivals are prophetic and they represent the harvest of souls. So if we do more study in the Bible, where the barley is mentioned, you'll find much information about the first resurrection and the character and calling of those who qualify for it, okay? Remember the scripture, many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, this is those who qualify 
they have done things. They are obedient. They are humble. They, they have been following the way of Yah. Yahuwah has been raising them up through their life experiences and teaching them and training them. And the fact that the barley matures early tells us that the barley, barley first fruits are the first people to mature spiritually, to bring forth the fruits of the kingdom that God requires. The barley matures early because they are heeding in humility his teaching. Um, they are training with him to do their work, to go out, and they will be the ones that sing as if it were a new song as we hear in Revelation, the 144,000. They bring forth the fruits of the kingdom that God requires. Um, barley are also you know, tough. <laughs> we'll just, there's no way, we'll just say they're tough. Barley can survive drought, heat, cold, and much easily, much more easily than wheat. These people who are being raised up to be qualified for this um, position, they have gone through a lot of hardships in their lives, and they have chosen to seek him through these hardships instead of letting their hearts become hardened or draw farther away from him. Um, and we can see another picture here in, um, the time of Passover when Jesus, Yeshua found, fed the 5,000, it occurred at the time of Passover. And, um, there was a young boy who had five barley loaves and two fish. And after multiplying the bread, Yeshua told his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost fragments, remnants. Okay. Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Later in the same chapter, Yeshua gives us the lesson in the story three times, saying, I will raise him up at the last day. The 144,000 will be raised up at the last day. They will be the ones that sing as if it was a new song, but it's not. It is the true gospel, not the false gospel being preached in every pulpit right now. Um, And in the other words, even as the 12 baskets of barley fragments were gathered, so nothing would be lost. His true word never come comes back void okay he he always has the last say his word always stands and as we were told that even in the last days even the gates of hell will not prevail against it okay so the 12 baskets representing the 12 tribes of israel and the 12,000 from each 12 tribes that's 144,000 um these, these fragments or remnants were gathered so nothing would be lost. So also the barley company, okay, the barley company, that's God's army, which was broken to feed the people. We, we have been beat down trying to tell you the truth now before the time comes. We have. Those of us who have been trying to share the true word of Yahuwah have been broken to feed you. When Jesus spoke to Peter and said, do you love me? And he said, yes. Jesus said, feed my sheep. So there are those who are broken, taking a beating, being told that we're telling and teaching a false gospel and that we are leading people to hell. We're being broken by telling you the truth, just like Jesus Yeshua was. Okay. 12 is a biblical number of divine government. The barley people are called to rule and reign with Christ. As for the calling of the barley company, you can also read um, that Gideon and his army were called a loaf of barley bread. God is raising up an army of overcomers who will rule with Christ to, to subdue all nations under his feet. Okay, that's the barley. Now, when we study about the wheat in the Bible, it teaches us about the church in general. Okay, right now what we're seeing the church in general is leavened. Okay. The feast of Pentecost focuses upon people who are leavened. What do I mean by leavened? What does it mean by leavened? Leavened means that they're following a false doctrine. Okay. They're following a false gospel other than what Yeshua taught. Okay. The Israel received a law. They received the law at the Mount Sinai on the day of Pentecost, the 10 commandments. Okay. On that day, they were formed into a kingdom as Yah spoke the word to them. All right. So the people were leavened. They did not want to step into the fire of God to stop the, stop the leaven. So Pentecost was not fulfilled in the days of Moses because they were disobedient. Okay. They were leavened. They still had pagan practices from Egypt. 
in their mindset and in their hearts. Just like now, the churches here teach pagan practices. They celebrate the different holidays. They have their trunk retreats on one of the most evil days of the year. They are not out preaching the truth about it and stepping away from it, helping others to see the truth. No, they're joining into the world. The trunk retreats, Thanksgiving, all the holidays are pagan. Worshiping on Sunday is pagan. Okay? So, no. <laughs> you, you, the, the church is extremely leavened right now. Okay? And we were warned. We were warned by Yeshua himself that we were to watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And here in Mark, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now, we see this very clearly in Paul's own words. The false apostle, self-appointed prophet, 13th apostle, guys, he's not 13th apostle. He tells you himself who he is connected to. Do some homework on the history. He has direct connections to King Herod Agrippa, greet Herodian, there it is right there, guys, and greet those who belong to the house of Narcissus, the Romans. Guys, the truth is there. I'm going to pin in a comment below an hour and a half long video that shares some, not all, because there's mountains and mountains of it, but there's some evidence of the proof that Paul was false. So I will pin that in a comment below. But this is what happens. What, what I'm seeing everywhere right now is anytime I bring up Yeshua's words that contradict Paul's, I get back in my face. Well, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, well, you're taking Paul's words over Yeshua's. Is Paul your savior? Is he the one that redeemed you? Is he the one that died on the cross? No, no, no. You're following a false prophet and you're following him to hell. Okay, this message is not going to be an easy one for many to hear. Okay, so we, we see here another um, significant Old Testament passage dealing with the wheat harvest is found in the story of Saul's coronation. I touched on this a little bit yesterday in my video about um, sacrifices. So the people demanded a king before David was born and Yahuwah gave them Saul to reign over them. The kingdom was thus renewed, but it was a kingdom mixed with leaven. Okay, mixed with leaven. Saul was crowned on the day of Pentecost. Um, and um, in the coronation speech, he says in 1 Samuel 12, 17, is it not the wheat harvest today? So he, he was like, hey, this is the signaling of the beginning of the wheat harvest. He was, he was following the feast days. But Saul was to Israel what church what the church is to the New Testament era <laughs> in a way. Isn't it interesting though that Saul, King Saul and Saul of Tarsus are eleven because Saul started out doing what was right, but the second year of his reign he disobeyed God and he and as a result he became disqualified to rule Israel. He lost his calling. He you know, people say you can't lose your salvation. I would say that he lost his opportunity unless there was some record somewhere that we don't know where he finally repented of what he did. But he was a people pleaser. That's what the churches in the days now do. They're people pleasers. They want to give people what they want. How do we draw more people in? Hey, let's be more like a rock concert. Hey, let's do these these harvest festivals for Halloween. Hey, let's do, you know, all these things. They're, they're acting more like the world instead of being set apart and being the light that they're supposed to be. Okay? So you guys got to take a very close look at what is going on in the world and pay attention. And finally, the Bible study of grape harvest, um, treading of the grapes in the wine press, tells us the fate of unbelievers. Um, I also should have put in here, unbelievers the unwise virgins, the lukewarm, okay? Could, because the lukewarm and um, the unwise virgins are just as bad or worse than unbelievers, okay? The wine press depicts God's wrath, judgment, and the lake of fire. 
And the purpose of the grain harvest of the spring, the barley and the wheat, is to provide bread for God's great communion table. Remember, he's going to set a table before us in the presence of his enemies. Hallelujah. The purpose of this Feast of Tabernacles is the celebration of the wine press to provide the wine for God's table. Without this wine, his communion table would only have bread, which would make it incomplete. Okay? Yahuwah will have his wine, but it must come by means of the wine press, which speaks of the judgments of God. Okay, so the harvest for barley and wheat and grapes are all different. Okay, the chaff from barley falls away very easily. Okay, so the barley is said to be winnowed or in a case raptured, right? They're raised up. Remember where it says, I will raise him up when he's talking about the barley company. That is the action of the wind itself. The wind is also symbolic of Holy Spirit. She is the one that lifts us up. Um, and this and this speaks the barley company, like I said, so quickly respond to the wind of the spirit. We are always humble and walking for looking for truth always and, and seeking ourselves introspectively testing our own hearts. And on those days that we feel like maybe we've we've sinned, which is every day because <laughs> we're not perfect in this flesh, but we try harder every day. And so we're always seeking him more than once all day long in prayer and thought and worship and and so those who are of the barley company are quickly quickly responding to holy spirit when conviction hits or when we need to move or speak okay to remove the chaff from the wheat requires threshing it's a much more severe action to harvest wheat Um, the church will be harvested that remember the general church will be harvested by means of judgment or tribulation we are in the tribulation that is why pre-tribulation rapture is false so the church is being harvested by means of judgment there are some that are starting to wake up which leads me to the parable of the ten virgins now we have this with this is a picture of what a general church would look like on a, on a Sunday. There are those, though, who, even though they might go to church on Sunday, they don't see the truth about the pagan um, practices yet, and they may, but they do have a heart for Yeshua, right? The light in the lamp is the Holy Spirit that they have. They have a true heart for Yeshua. They're excited to see him, and they've done everything possible to be ready and to have extra to be prepared. All right, that's their relationship with Yeshua. These other unwise virgins, they pay him lip service and they've put on the clothes for the wedding, but they haven't really, you know, they haven't really prepared. They haven't kept what they needed and they don't have any oil for their lamps. So when the bridegroom and the bride, which is 144,000, have already come and they go in um, and the five unwise virgins are shut out, They'll be told they, he doesn't know them. Okay. He doesn't know them because they don't have a personal relationship with him. And even though they might be surrounded by lies and don't see all the truth yet, the the five wise virgins are following him still. Okay. So you guys have to realize that this is, you have to understand this, the three different harvests, you fall into one of those three camps. Every single human on this planet falls into one of those three groups, right? And then to talk about the grape harvest, obviously grapes do not have chaff, but they have flesh that must be pressed severely in order to obtain the wine. This represents the most severe form of judgment upon unbelievers. This will be the, the, the wine press is Garmageddon when you read in the revelation about blood being high as a horse's bridle and it's going to cover so many miles (laughs) Uh, guys, this, this, yeah, this is the grapes of wrath. Okay. These are the grapes of wrath. Father is going to, and like I said, the grapes also include lukewarm believers, the five unwise virgins and unbelievers altogether. Okay. So just to recap all of that, the three harvests, the barley harvest is the bride of Christ, the 144,000 Yahuwah's army. The wheat 
are the wedding guests, the five wise virgins, tribulation saints, or known as the leaven church. They will eventually see the truth once the 144,000 teach them. Um, grapes, the five unwise virgins, the lukewarm false religions who are still stuck in their pride, and the unbelievers, because pride goeth before the fall the same way it did with Lucifer. Okay? So, which three groups, which of the three groups do you think you fall into? If you have questions, if you have doubts, the best place to go is to his feet in the throne room, seeking Father for revelation. Take this message as either correction or confirmation or condemnation because we are so very close to the fulfillment of these things. The barley harvest is soon. It will be first. And very shortly, there will be those who are true servants of Yahuwah whose voices will fall silent for a time because there is going to be silence in heaven. There will be no more warnings. So time is really running out. You need to figure out if you are going to listen to this message and do your own study because you cannot get the oil is something you have to have. The oil is your knowledge. Your oil is what he's shown you. And whether or not you've been open-minded to receive different things that you thought were different from what you've always been taught. Because every human being on this planet has been born into lies. We've been taught lies left and right. Everything, you, you have to assume that everything that you know is a lie before you can really turn to him alone. This is a faith walk, guys. It's, it's walking on water. You have to turn to him alone and have him show you which parts are true and which parts are lies. All the shady, gray, half-truth lies of the enemy. Because time is very short. My time for giving more teachings and warnings is almost over. My mission is almost complete. I pray that this message will hit your heart and your spirit. And you will take it before Yahuwah and ask the Ruach HaKodesh, to reveal the truth to you. Shalom.